Hello and welcome and or welcome back to the channel. My name is Brady and uh, I'll be your host for the evening. And today I wanna to talk about a technique that I use very, very frequently on almost all of my film sets uh, when it comes to lighting. Now, every set is different, so you're probably asking, well, how does this apply to every single film set? And that's something that I wanna get into here, but I wanna break down kind of what's going on here. So I've put together this film set or this uh, really film analog set with this eight mil projector. Just a couple of things here. And you see you've got this very contrasty lighting. You've got the cyans, you've got the ambers. And the purpose of this and the reasoning of why I did this is because I wanted to control my entire lighting setup. So I blacked out all of the windows and got total control of the lighting environment. So that way I can bring in all of the lighting to really show you exactly what this technique is. And this technique that we're talking about is creating pools of lighting and visual interest throughout your scene. Now, it's something that's really looked past a lot of the times, but whenever I'm shooting, I'm trying to create these pools of lighting to where there's different exposure pops creating visual interest or kind of leading the viewer's eye to certain parts in the frame. Now, that might sound a little bit confusing for you, so I wanna break that down one by one in regards to this scene, and then we can translate it afterwards to a scene of your choice. So what does this actually mean for your own lighting, your own scene. Uh, say you're going into a project, you don't really know what to look for. And that's what we're gonna go about. So, I wanna turn everything off here. I just wanna backtrack. I'm using Citus Link here to do that. And I wanna start with, well, I've got my key light on me. If I cut out the key light, well, you can't really see me. So we're just gonna keep that on for the sake of, you know, you being able to see me. But I'm gonna take a step over here and talk about, you know, the purpose of everything. So, I've got right here this projector. This is the main focus of the scene. This is where I want everybody to look. So, of course, I'm gonna start with my key light, and that is right here is this uh, F22C, this Amaranth F22C. Now, I knew I wanted this contrast between this warm tungsten and cyan, so I started with just this warm kind of overhead light with a grid and diffusion just shining right down on my scene. Now, this is the first pool of light that I'm talking about, is one little, you know, isolated area. Again, with no lights, and I'm just gonna turn this off for a second, all I've got is the practical. It doesn't look good, obviously. So I'm starting to create these pools of lights, starting with, say, this A key light, and this is taking the eyes of the viewer, and it's going right here. But there's no depth or interest in the scene. There's, it, it really falls off and keeps the scene very isolated right here, and that's not something that I want. So, turn this back on here, I said, how can I add more interest? How can I add more contrast, pizzazz, pop? And going into this color contrast side of the spectrum, I saw on this side, we've got a lot of really cool details. This is where I want to stand out. With just that there, you don't see a lot of this detail area right there. You're just not getting a lot of interest there. So that led me to my next light. And I put a Amaran T4C tube right here, adding into this fluorescent look. So let's bring back a little bit of ex exposure on me again here so I can talk to you. Ultimately, what I've got here is an Amaran T2C, and this is set to an exposure of a 140 color hue and a 35 saturation. So that, I've mentioned before, gets me this kind of fluorescent tube feel, this really subtle grungy green that I always love so much. And the purpose of that, you can really see is when I strike this on and off, now you're getting so many of these really cool details. You're getting reflection off the wheels. You're getting some like textures on the Kodak logo and this vent as well. So now we're creating another pool of light right here. This is a pool and it doesn't need to be large areas of the room. It can really be just a little puddle, if you will. We can go a little puddle and just keep this right here and getting a little bit of exposure in there as well. So. We know that say, even if this is a human being, we would light our subject, but we still need to light the entire scene. So that led me to the next light that I wanted to add, which is back here. Now you're starting to see, we've got another pool of light over here. Now we've got this gradient coming up in this as well as an Amaran T2C tube, and that's set to a, like a 2500 Kelvin because I wanted to match it up to that existing practical that we've got. So, now you can see that we've got this, this pool of light that's right here. We've just got like this radiating little 
glow coming up. So now we're starting to add visual interest into our scene. And going along the lines of this color contrast, I wanted to add in something else into this background because that one warm light source just wasn't enough for me. So I took a B7C bulb and I threw the bulb in here. Now, you see this color contrast that we see over here? We see the same contrast here. So turning off my key light, now you're really getting more of these pools of light. You're getting this warm glow here. And then to contrast that, you're getting this fluorescent glow here. And then you've got the in-frame practical creating a little bit of glow there. So we're really starting to create these little pools of visual interest lights, but something just felt a little bit off. Of course, this looks fantastic. I was starting to look in this vicinity here at, a, at, at this canister, which looks really, really cool. It's definitely something that I would love to make appealing. So how am I gonna do that? Well, let's keep adding a little bit of lighting and just paint in tones and contrast where I want it. So that was the next light that I added, which over here on frame right, you've got an Amaran T2C tube, again, matched up to that same fluorescence. So you can start to see it come into play on this reflection here. So now you've got this really cool splitting. And with my key light off, you've got this really cool splitting with the tones of this warm coming from the key light. And then you've got this fluorescent coming from over there. And you're really creating these little puddles and pools of light, creating more visual interest on that as well. Now this looks beautiful. I'm not gonna lie, it looks awesome. We've got these different pools and areas of light, but I noticed that up in frame right, in this area here, it's just, it's, it's dark. It's not necessarily appealing. And again, I wanted to add one more just pool of light in here, and pool of color and interest. So up here, I added an Amaran T4C tube again to that same fluorescent. And one thing that I always wanna be mindful of is color contrast. Now you're always gonna have some sort of color palette in your scene most likely, whether it's just warm and cool, or monochromatic warm, monochromatic cool, or the splitting color contrast using a RGB colors. So I knew that I've got this mix of warm and fluorescent going throughout my scene, but I wanted to keep everything balanced. I don't wanna keep just the fluorescent on one side and just the warm on the right side. Now looking at everything, we've got warm here on the left side of the frame. It is, you know, a little bit green heavy on the left, but we've got warm in this vicinity here. But then right behind the warm on the same side of the frame, we've got green, we've got green pops here. We've got some of this fluorescent over here and color pools in there. And then working our way into center frame, we've got some warm here. And then right below it, we have this fluorescent area. You see that same splitting there. And then over into this side of the frame, we've got warm pops here. And then we have fluorescent in this area as well. So we're keeping this consistent balance of our color contrast throughout the entire scene as we add in these pools of light. Okay, so let's take a step back for a second. So we've seen the scene, we've seen how we added all of these lights. And I do wanna go over progression of each one in a moment. But let's talk about it in terms of translating this to your scene, because this is not a scene that you're gonna be working with all the time. Oftentimes you'll be working with just natural sunlight or an interview subject or something along those lines. And you need to interpret this to a way that makes sense for your particular project that you're on. Breaking it down, we've got all these little areas that are just exposure pops because we kind of want to have this uh, bouncing around kind of linear pattern across our frame with exposure pops and shadow areas. So you can see in this particular frame that we've got a dark area going to a light area and then we're moving over more to center frame. You've got this dark strip and then another light strip and you've got these really pools of like areas where you've got light and dark shadow areas and that's what's gonna make your image very visually interesting. So if you're working with an interview, have your subject exposed, then right next to them have a darker area and then maybe a pop of light on a tree or something like that and creating these little pools of light. That's where it's really gonna come into play using multiple lights and shaping your light as well to create these visually interesting areas. And this doesn't just apply to color. I know we've got this color contrast kind of setup going on here, but say we just take all the color out of the image. Now we're looking at a black and white image. You can still see that there are these pools of light still evident. You've got bright on the reels. You've got dark over frame left. You've got these bright pops on the wall. You've got the bright practical on frame right. 
the film canisters and the film camera on the table, they also have some visually interesting color pops or an exposure pops to them as well. So it's not just making color contrast, but just adding an exposure and taking away shadows and balancing this out to create these little puddles of exposure, giving you a visually interesting scene. Now I wanna go ahead and break down this particular scene one by one for us to look at. So the first light that I added in aside from the in-frame practical was this overhead F22C. I've got this boomed overhead. It's an impact boom arm I got off B&H website for all of you who are curious. And I've got this with the grid and the uh, diffusion that comes with it as well. This rigged overhead and I've placed it a little bit backlit as well. Instead of getting your shadows filled with this, I placed it backwards a little bit more. So you're getting instead a kiss of light here, a kiss of light here and just really these interesting little rim lights and edge lights with that first light. Then we added in this color contrast T4C Amaran tube. Again, 140 hue, 35 saturation is typically what I go for to get this particular color. And we've got that creating visual interest here. This is another pool of light. You've got it on this vent, you've got it here, so on and so forth. Then the next one I added was in the background, working on the scene on that back wall, creating that little puddle of warm tungsten. And that is an Amaran T2C tube set to about 2,500 Kelvin. I matched it up with that existing practical, so everything looked symmetrical. Then to contrast that in that kind of like right third line of the frame, I added in this B7C bulb, again attached to this 140-35 kind of fluorescent look. And then I added in on frame right, We've got this color contrast creation here on the side of this film canister as well. So now you've got this really cool splitting. Oops, sorry. Now you've got this really cool splitting of warm right here and then fluorescent reflecting off of the canister. And then the last one was a T4C tube up frame left set to that same fluorescent. So you're creating this balance throughout the scene. So yes, there are a lot of lights going into the scene and it might be intimidating or overwhelming or just daunting because it's not everybody's got all these lights. But I did this because I wanted to show an exaggerated form of these different pools of light. So I sucked away all the light by using just black across the back wall. And then I just wanted to add in a ton of lights to really see what little accents, little like light sources can do, but also what larger light sources can do like this, or big pools of light over in the corner, and just really peppering things in and over analyzing your frame. Sometimes I'll, I'll turn it to black and white and I'll see what's brighter and what's dark because when you're looking at a colored frame, it, 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 colors can get mixed up with exposure and sometimes I'll just turn it to black and white on my monitor and I'll look where are some brighter areas in the frame? Where are some darker areas? What needs exposure? What needs less exposure? And I'm creating visual interest using these pools of light. So going back to the beginning of it all where I mentioned that you can interpret this to your own projects. That's something that I think that is really important to do. When you get on location, check out, well, are you gonna have sunlight coming in frame left? Are you gonna need to balance the darkness of the room on the frame right by bringing in a practical or just adding in little pops of exposure. So going into your scene, just look at your frame. Once you get your camera set up, say, how can I make this a little bit spicier, ultimately? So that wraps up this video. Again, I've been distant. I need to apologize for that. I miss you guys, but I'm working on, it may be a course. I don't know, but I'm excited to release it. Nonetheless, I'm very busy, but I miss you all and I love you all. And I'm gonna head out because I've got coffee to drink and beer to drink and you know me so anyway i'll catch you guys next time love you miss you and see you in the next video